Mac will introduce the panel and then <clears throat> the floor will be yours. Good morning. Go ahead, oh, no, go ahead. All right. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Zach Chalaric, the Director of uh, the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, the next budget hearing is the Department of Animal Care and Control. Uh, starting from your left is Don Winstall, Director and Assistant Director Deb Finelli. Welcome. 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 Well, it, this is your turn. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present that 2017 budget for the uh, Franklin County Department of Animal Care and Control. Um, the, animal, uh, the department's mission is to improve the coexistence of dogs and humans by serving the public through a group of dedicated professional humane staff and volunteers, by active enforcement of state and local laws, by providing programs that encourage pets for life, by providing temporary shelter and humane care for stray, unwanted, or homeless dogs, by maintaining a passionate relocation program that ensures undisruptive, healthy, altered dogs to be returned to, the, to an educated public. This agency, as you know, consists of two divisions, one that is responsible for enforcing the Ohio Revised Code with a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week services for the, uh, the citizens of the county and another that operates the Franklin County Dog Shelter and Adoption Center. Both divisions work together to provide pet law and pet care education services to the public. During the past year, the dog shelter has seen the live release rate reach and remain in the upper 80s even, and even up into the 90 percentiles, with the exception of the period in September during an illness outbreak. During that episode, we were assisted by local experts at Ohio State University, as well as Maddie's Fund and the School of Shelter Medicine at the University of Wisconsin's College of Veterinary Medicine. The county is currently working with the University of Wisconsin to provide a review of the event, which will also be a great opportunity for us to gain from their expertise in all areas of shelter management, including the continuing challenges and opportunities in areas that improve quality of life adaptability and overall health through training, enrichment, socialization, and by reducing intake numbers and minimizing transit time for dogs from impoundment to adoption. Now Deb will, now Deb will step in. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Deb. First and foremost, I want to thank you for your generous budget. We really appreciate your support and it's very much appreciated. Today I'm here to talk about initiatives that uh, we're looking forward to in 2017. And the first initiative I want to talk about is the spay neuter program, which all of you know is, holds a special place in my heart mm -hmm. and been working on it for many, many years. And so uh, the goal of the program is to help promote affordable spay neuter veterinarian services to help reduce the county's homeless animal pet population. Um, we have the opportunity to end overpopulation of dogs through prevention and the answer is really simple spay neuter mm -hmm. as defenders and protectors of the animals lives offering low-cost spay and neuter to the public is a goal that we can achieve simple procedure with overwhelming results the preliminary research that um, I have done regarding uh, similar programs that we're looking at has been proven that over a period of time with spay and neuter in your population your intake of dogs bring into the shelter will diminish. Um, and that is what our ultimate goal is, to reduce the amount of intake into the shelter. By providing care to underserviced canine population, the spay and neutering of the dogs will enhance the quality of life for the animals and the population, the canine owners. My initiative is twofold. It's the reduction of unsterilized dogs in our community, and it's also the reduction of the number of unwanted dogs that are euthanized. In order to achieve the greatest, most substantial impact on lowering shelter intake and reducing euthanasia, successful reduction in birth rates must be accomplished. When I started doing research and, and did some sampling of population as to why you didn't have your dogs spayed or neutered, and it was always a cost factor. That was the number one answer that I received from anyone. That's why they didn't have their dogs altered. And in looking at this, people with low incomes are just as likely to have dogs as people with high incomes. So this is um, also shows that people that are in the lower income bracket are the ones that are more likely to turn their dogs into the shelter. So by offering this service to them, the dogs will stay longer in the homes, and we're also doing a great service to the citizens of Franklin County. 
Um, I'm convinced that the low-income people really want to do this. Cost is the factor. And so by providing a no-cost spay and neuter program for these dogs, I think we're going to see some dramatic effects in Franklin County with the amount of intake that comes into our shelters. Um, I also want to encourage uh, pit bull owners to have their dogs spayed and neutered, and we'll be targeting that as well. Uh, since 27% of our intake is pit bulls, um, this will be a substantial help for the shelter as well. Absolutely. We also know that pit bulls' uh, litters are much larger than a lot of other breed dogs. Mm. So when they procreate, they pro procreate at enormous numbers. So my program will offer um, services by our shelter vet, um, veterinarians. We will be doing it five days a week, Monday through Friday. They will get a spay neuter. They will get the vaccinations. They will get a <coughs> microchip implant and registration, and they'll get an examination performed by the veterinarians prior to the surgery. So in conclusion, I know it's small steps, but it's a bit start of a big journey, and it's going to be it's going to be a fun journey, and it's going to be well worth it for the citizens of Franklin County. I can't wait to get started. I'm very happy we are able to do that. Yeah. I'm very appreciative of your support. It is so important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure, thank you. The next thing I want to talk about, the second initiative, uh, we've actually, it's, it's actually two phases, but we've actually started one phase of it. Uh, we created a rescue page for our rescue organizations. It's on our website. and. This page displays all the dogs currently at the shelter in need of rescues, and it's set up in different categories so that a rescue can easily look at what needs to be moved medically, what needs to be moved behaviorally, and the urgency of um, the situation, whether they need to work on it or not. It also tells them if someone else has already pulled the dog and they can stop working on that dog. Um, it has the most current available uh, information available on the dogs at all times. It uploads every 15 minutes and updates constantly all day long, so people can always look at this and know what's available for rescues. Um, it tells them the day we begin networking it, so they also know how long they have to work on a dog as well. Um, our goal is to provide transparency to the community about the dogs we are networking for rescue, as well as accurate, timely information about those dogs for whom we have limited options. By working together and reducing the amount of misinformation that's sometimes circulated on social media with good intentions, we can help each other focus on collective efforts to save more dogs. Misinformation on social media. <laughs> surprise, Never surprise. Never heard of such a thing. <laughs> Never heard of such. How about almost no information on social media? <laughs> okay. I was being polite. <laughs> So the second phase of this is which I just started working on uh, like two weeks ago is a lost found page that's going to work very similar to this. And so as soon as you bring in your, your stray or your lost dog or anyone brings in a dog, that dog will be posted on a site and be updated every 15 minutes as well so that the public can go on there and look for their lost dogs. And um, of course we still encourage people to come into the shelter and look for their dog, mm -hmm. but at least those that maybe wouldn't do that will get on the site and look for the dog. So we're, we're hoping and I'm looking forward to getting that up and running very soon too. That's great. Yeah. And my last initiative is I hope this year to be able to do more microchip and vaccine clinics. I think it's real important for the public to be able to afford those as well. That's mm -hmm. great. So. My, uh, how long have we do, been doing that microchip? My dog, I've had, I got my dog, uh, good Lord, almost seven years ago now. She's, she'll, she'll be nine and in March, and she's she was microchipped. So how long have we been doing microchipping? I think we're almost at 10 or 11 years. It mm -hmm. was an initiative that I started when I first came. So um, I think it's at least maybe 11 years. Mm -hmm. well, the we, thing I like about it, it's a lifetime enrollment. That's really important yeah. to me in the shelter, that we have a lifetime enrollment. And we're listed as second on the enrollment. So if that person moves or doesn't have the dog anymore, the dog will still get reported back to us. Gotcha. And we can take the dog back. Well, you know, we are excited about the spay and neuter program and, and the administration of that. I know we're still working through to try to get that, you know, uh, and so we still have, but, but it is coming and we're very excited about having that. Uh, uh, thank you for all, all the great work, even under the, you know, the immense pressure that we've all been under 
the last few months since the December outbreak, since what the day after you showed up, Don, or whatever, you know. So we, well, one, thank you. That's been that's been tough. I wanted to go back to um, one, just for the general viewing public that, that that may not quite understand, even though it's been reported in the media quite a bit. We are an open shelter, so we accept all dogs. Um, and and that is uh, that that makes a difference. It means uh, it means a, a great deal that we are an open shelter, because not every not every shelter is certainly the humane societies aren't, and other shelters in the surrounding area aren't necessarily an open shelter. But we have, with the exception of the time around the December outbreak, we have consistently maintained a live release rate, which means dogs are either adopted out, rescued out, or returned to their owner of, of 85 to 90 percent, some months even higher than that. So, you know, the number of dogs that we're dealing with who is, is annually uh, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, depending on the year. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with all of those dogs and 90, roughly 90 percent of them are going out live release to either an adoption a, a, a shelter, I mean, a, a, a rescue, or a or back to their owners. Or and a new, yeah. and of that percentage of the other dogs, a large number of those dogs are sick or injured or unadoptable for one reason or another. So the work you guys are doing is fantastic. Yes, there's a lot of misinformation out there on, on social media, and there's a lot of, um, uh, there's certainly a lot of, uh, um, passionate uh, response and uh, many, many passionate people in this community, there's no question. And, and Commissioner and I hear from all of them, as you do every day. Uh, some of them are very helpful and constructive and caring and wonderful people. Some of them, not so much. Um, but we believe that, that the public policy that's been set, the direction that you guys are taking, uh, we believe it's important. It's it's it's. It's strong public policy. It's the right thing for this community. Uh, there are those who disagree with us, and we understand, and there always will be. But we think this is the important way to go, and we really appreciate the work that you guys do. Thank you, Commissioners. And, and also, I guess I'd just like to take an opportunity for a shout out to those rescues that, that do, do great take, work. take a lot of the dogs, and, and uh, they're some of the we, most passionate, the most dedicated out, people. Right? Oh, Correctly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they're, they're We've dedicated. We've had some very respectful, responsible rescue groups coming to our briefings over the last several months, and they've learned a lot about us. They've learned a lot about county government. And they've helped and us. They've helped us a lot. Some of the emails I've received have been hateful. They've been the most hateful emails I've ever received and calling me a murderer, calling you a murderer is unacceptable and I respond to most every email I've ever gotten with the exception of these that are calling me a murderer. I will not respond to an email that calls me a murderer or calls me somebody that's creating a holocaust. It's offensive and it's inappropriate. And I've said that to the other rescue groups and I will say it again as many times as I need to publicly and privately. And you shouldn't have to take that and we shouldn't have to take that. There's no place for that kind of rhetoric, no place. Thank you. Um, anyway, we appreciate uh, all that you're doing. Thank you. We appreciate that your situation is different than most Anybody. of the agencies that, that we have come before. Yeah. Uh, not all, but most of them. Uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate the uh, the additional stress that can be not only on your positions, but you know, I mean, this it. it We've, it's tough. We've had to. We've dealt with this over the years. It's, yeah. it's a, just a difficult, difficult job, and we appreciate the hard work and the dedication that you guys put in. Uh, sometimes under stressful, very stressful uh, um, uh, pressures and situations. So, 
uh, keep up the good work. We're happy to, uh, uh, we're happy with your budget. We're happy with the work that you guys are doing. And just, uh, you know, let us know how we can continue to help. Commissioners, if I may add, I, um, uh, in addition to what's already been discussed today by the staff, which includes the spay and neutering program, uh, we know we want to do it. We intend to do it. We have the resources to do it. I want to make sure the public understands that. It's about the mechanics of making it work, and that's what we're working through now. But in addition to that, as mentioned by staff, uh, we're going through a process, and hopefully by early 2017, we'll be able to contract further with the University of Wisconsin. They were of tremendous help to us during the, the illness crisis back in September. And also, uh, you all have made it clear, staff agrees with me and certainly with the county administration that it's a, that it's a great idea to have a advisory committee that is, uh, that is formally created that can provide citizen and community feedback on what the shelter's doing well and how we might be able to work better together to be even better. And so that will be introduced uh, in early 27, be created and uh, hopefully, it, the intent is to create it by the end of the year and then to populate that committee much as we've done with the, the food committee by early 2017 so that they can be in place too. Uh, and, and then we're gonna take additional steps and we're having continuing conversations about strengthening and supporting staff who works tremendously hard. And I guess if there would be one thing that I would like to add as the administrator that oversees the department is a clear recognition of not just the two people at the table, but the staff out there that is tremendously dedicated to the animals in their care. Sure. They do these jobs because they care about the dogs that are in our community. Um, and none of them look forward to making difficult decisions. All of them want to do what's best for the animals and for the community. And they come to work every day with that in mind. And we should be grateful for that. And I know I am. So thank you. Thanks, thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Um, one other thing I'd like to note, um, what Dale pointed out was very important, and that is the vaccination program and developing the criteria around income eligibility for the spade and neuter program. I would request that the agency look to mirror that criteria and implement um, a, a low cost, um, if not free, vaccination program in certain targeted areas so we can increase the number of dogs that are receiving the proper vaccinations because I think that is a, an immunization, I think that is a very important component of what we need to do uh, to build upon the progress that we made. Uh, I, I echo Eric's comments. Um, I know that we have a, a dedicated team that has been at work behind the scenes uh, day after day um, caring about the welfare of every animal that's taken under our custody. So. As county administrator, I would like to personally uh, send out a thanks to all the folks that, that work out at the animal shelter, the 60 some odd employees, uh, that county administration truly does uh, care about what they're doing. I know sometimes when you work in remote locations, we have various locations throughout the county, they may feel as though county administration is not aware of, of their contributions, but be sure to know that we are aware of their contributions and the importance of their work that they do every day. And everything that we're doing as far as uh, steps after the distemper outbreak is for the insurance of brighter days for not only them as employees of the agency, but the residents of Franklin County. So that is truly our sole focus. So thanks. That is, I, I, I want to take a second to plug something as well. Um, it is uh, important to uh, annually get your dog licensed, mm -hmm. um, which is coming up here by the end of the year for folks. Started today. Started today, but it, it, for for registration for 17. Uh, but but your dog must be licensed annually. I live. I have several friends who had no idea. They thought they licensed their dog one time and that was <laughs> it. Your dog has to have an annual dog license uh, in Franklin County, and you can get that done in the Franklin County Auditor's Office. I'm sure information on the Franklin County Auditor's website. Uh, the second thing would be, as you talk about vaccinations, um, you know, I happen to be, uh, you need to get your dog vaccinated, or vaccinated, you also need to get your, make sure your dog has its rabies shots. Um, I, my dog is a friendly dog, as you remember, Deb, very friendly dog. 
uh, sometimes a little too friendly, and dogs ne don't necessarily like her as much as they like as she likes them. But my dog was involved a few years back in a in a, uh, in a dog fight. Uh, me being a knucklehead, <laughs> sometimes uh, I tried to break up the dog fight and pulled my dog back, and I got bit by the other dog twice. So, and and you know for a lot of reasons, I ended up having to go to the, to the emergency room and get some stitches. And when that happens, the public should understand that if your dog's involved in something like that, when that happens, that has to be reported to the Department of Health by the hospital. So my neighbor's dog uh, had to be quarantined for a month because mm -hmm. they couldn't produce rabies records. Um, my neighbor didn't like it very much. He was pretty upset with me for a while. Um, and I didn't, I mean, I, there was nothing I could do. I had to have stitches. I, you know, the, the, the hospital made the report to the Department of Health. So you have to make sure your dog's vaccinated, not only for the health of your dog, but there's, I mean, for the health of, of, of uh, the, the, you know, the public in general. I mean, if your dog just happens to, you know, bite a dog, bite a, bite a person, you've got to be able to produce the record that your dog's been vaccinated. So. And to carry the message uh, of vaccination forward is a very good thing. But to be clear, we vaccinate every dog that comes into our door, correct? Yes. yes. So dogs that come under our care, we take take the time to vaccinate. We need to carry that message to the rest of the public. That's right. and that's great. But then there's other, obviously there are then other vaccinations that are annual and oh, yeah. semi-annual or whatever. And yeah. and I love the fact that we are um, looking to produce low-cost vaccinations and, and do what we can to help uh, help folks in terms of in income eligibility and. Um, but it's important. I mean, it, you know, you don't think about it until it happens. Until it happens. That's and so my, so my, na sadly, my neighbor's dog had to be quarantined in the backyard for a month. Mm -hmm. wasn't allowed to go on a walk or anything for an entire month because this happened and they couldn't produce that rabies. Thankfully, the dog didn't have rabies, and I was, That's you know, good. but dog bites are no joke. I learned. <laughs> I know, it, I know education has been a big part of the mission of the agency. I think that there's misconceptions about certain things if you do to your dog that there's going to be certain uh, behavioral changes or these type of things. I think we need to, and as we implement a program, we need to continue to educate the public on the importance of vaccinations and, and what that means to their, to their pet. And if finances are a barrier, uh, just the, the, the risk of public health means that we should be looking at trying to provide greater assistance, and I think that's kind of what the point I was just want to get on. Exactly. Sure. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioners, we have a break until 11.30, at which time economic development and